Hi, everyone, and welcome to the series talk. Um, my name is Pavel Andrzejewski. Um, I created the Silius project. I also co-founded a company called uh, Lacken, where we provide services, consulting, training, and commercial development for, uh, for Silius. Um, I came from Łódź, from Poland. Uh, it's a beautiful city, and I totally recommend visiting it. It's in the exact center of Poland, so very close to Warsaw. Um, drop by our offices if you, if you want to talk about e-commerce and uh, Symfony stuff. So, first of all, what is Cilius? Um, how many e-commerce developers we have in the room? Like, who is doing mostly e-commerce? Okay. So, Cilius is an e-commerce framework for PHP. Um, I would say that's one of the main differences compared to the uh, mainstream platforms. It's both a platform, which you can use as a whole, but it is also a framework. Just like Symfony is a framework for web development, Cilius is a framework for e-commerce. And um, it's released under the, I think, the most permissive licenses in open source, so MIT. You can do pretty much whatever you want, use it commercially, sell it as a SaaS, pretty much whatever. And um, the project started in about 2011, but this was only like my pet project with a set of bundles for Symfony. It was about the time when Symfony 2.0 was released. Um, and um, for today, we have over three, almost three and a half a hundred of code contributors. Um, all our packages, because Silius is a set of packages on, on packages that you can download just with Composer. Um, I think in, in a couple of days or maybe weeks, we will reach three, uh, three million downloads. A lot of people uh, are helping with the translations on crowding platform, and it's under pretty heavy development. That's definitely something to consider, but I have some good news if you have been following us for some time right now. So yeah, it's, it's pretty busy right now. Um, we just released an alpha. Um, about which I will talk uh, later in the talk. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty pretty busy time for us. Okay, so what makes Cilius different and why I even created it? First of all, my main inspiration was Symfony. So like I said, in Symfony you have these components, these bundles that solve website development problems for you. HTTP foundation for handling requests and responses, Finder for um, for uh, like traversing the file system. And with Cilius, you have components and bundles for e-commerce. So in the first months of Cilius, we had like catalog bundle, which obviously provided you with products and so on, but nothing else. It didn't even knew uh, about the prices or taxes or shipping, anything, just the products, just the options, variations and so on. Sales, card addressing and so on. So basic uh, e-commerce bundles, uh, even, even some blogger bundle appeared because I was basically experimenting with what you can achieve um, with a bundle system from Symfony. Right now we are uh, strictly focused on the e-commerce tool set. So our components and bundles for Symfony are for example product, which still provides you the product catalog functionality. We have pricing, which helps you calculate prices based on different aspects and allows, for example, to implement uh, custom calculators. Um, all these components are completely decoupled, so like I said, the product doesn't even know about inventory management. You need to combine product component with the inventory one in order to have like stock count and so on. But of course you don't have to do it if you use the full platform. Um, these are just like the most important and uh, most basic e-commerce uh, components, but we have about 60 packages, and that includes components for PHP that you can use with pretty much any framework you want. It's just, it's, it's like, like I said, like a finder component for Symfony. You just require it with a composer, um, a command line interface, and it's ready to use in your project. So if you prefer Laravel uh, compared to Symfony, you could still use uh, the classes, interfaces, and, and stuff from the packages. And we also have the bundles. Um, I will be perfectly honest with you. I was 
more of a developer when I started to working with Silius than a businessman or e-commerce expert. And I think that, um, that gave us the advantage uh, that while I, I still learn all this e-commerce stuff and so on, but I think from the very beginning, Silius was built by developers for developers. So developer experience is one of our most, uh, is, is our biggest focus. Like we provide you a framework that you enjoy working with that is like using the latest technologies and allows you to use latest methodology for development, like testing, BDD, and so on. So it's totally focused on uh, developers' productivity. If, you, if we look at the Silius stack as a whole, uh, we have Silius platform, uh, which is all components combined together in a core. Um, so it basically provides you a standard web shop. I would say it's, uh, it's not as feature rich as Magento or PrestaShop, of course, because we, we are not even 1.0 yet. But it gives you most of the core uh, e-commerce functionality. So you get promotions, you get uh, coupons, shipping, uh, of course, taxes, product catalog, user management, customer management, and so on. So you get a full platform, a fully working shop that you can use with payment integrations and so on. Then we have um, the bundles, which integrate the components uh, with Symfony. So let's say if you need a product catalog functionality, like you build a static website which doesn't sell yet, but needs a catalog of products with some options selecting and different variations, so t-shirts in different colors and so on. Then you can use the product uh, component. But if you're a Symfony developer, you get a product bundle that basically integrates it uh, with the framework itself. So you don't need to define the services, the form types. It also integrates you with Doctrine and so on. And finally, on the bottom we have the components. So like I said, standard PHP libraries that you can use with every project. And the Silius platform 1.0 is actually built from a few more components. Um, the architecture of Silius was evolving a lot. This year we spent really crazy amount of uh, time and effort on rebuilding Silius. Um, like not, not, not even the core itself, but the, the outside, the, the stuff that you, most of you as developers will use. We built it based on our experiences on commercial projects, based on the feedback from the community. And the final architecture of Silius 1.0 uh, is, is the following. We of course have the components, so product, inventory, taxes, and so on. We have the core, and the core is just another uh, PHP component and a bundle for Symfony. So that's the place where uh, product variation finally, um, product variant finally uh, knows that it has a tax category so that you can assign and apply taxes to your cart uh, based on different categories. All other stuff is integrated in the core, so products finally get prices and so on. And then on top of that, we actually have three Symfony bundles. And how many Symfony developers we have here? Okay, so it's, it's, it's pretty clear what, what a bundle is for Symfony. Hmm. And we have admin, shop, and API. And the cool thing is that they are completely separated. So if you have a use case where you want to use uh, e-commerce, uh, um, when you want to use Silius e-commerce as a backend for a mobile application, you can just, with, by excluding the bundle from the kernel, you can only include uh, the admin interface for, for the order management, for managing products and so on, and include the API. If you are totally on API, you can even build your own admin just with by removing few lines from the standard edition, uh, you can disable the admin uh, interface and build your own or just use the API. In the most custom scenarios, one of the examples is, for example, is uh, a marketplace application that we are building at Lacken right now, um, where we disable everything. Because it's, it's totally not a B2C shop. Like the, the shop component, the shop component is for uh, B2C. Um, and it's, it's a completely different uh, system, we, uh, a marketplace where you create multiple vendors and so on. So what we, what we do is disable all these contents and use only the core. So inside the core you have the e-commerce logic, you have state machine definitions for your checkout, for your checkout flow, for your order flow, uh, for shipping process and so on. 
And these components on the top are mostly routing configuration and templates. Maybe some can be many, many builders or something like that. But otherwise, it's mostly interface. The rest lives in the core. And in some scenarios, if you don't even use uh, Symfony, you can totally go only for the components. There are projects which are uh, PHP applications built with either custom frameworks or, uh, or frameworks different than Symfony, and they only use components. But that still gives you the advantage that you don't need to reinvent the wheel like 10th time implementing taxes logic, because most of the time in, in like 90, 5% of cases, taxes work pretty much the same way uh, for, for a PHP application. You get some tax categories, some tax rates, and based on the country, uh, based on the billing or shipping address, zip codes, you apply taxes. So that's implemented for you. You don't have to do it again. Another advantage, and that's the part of the built by developers for developers philosophy, is that we use Symfony and Doctrine. So we have plenty of Symfony developers in the room, so I think you know the advantages. Um, it's, it's the framework that is used by one of the most popular, uh, uh, popular uh, uh, open source projects in the PHP world. And one of the things that we tried to really do from the very beginning is make Cilius a standard Symfony app. So we are using Doctrine, we are using Symfony, and um, while we have some things that are specific uh, to, to Cilius, like those of you who used Cilius before or have checked our documentation and so on will know that we totally love routing. We use routing for a lot of stuff. Maybe sometimes overusing it, but that's for the sake of rapid development. And um, if you have a look at simplest uh, example of how to find a product or how to create a new product, that's just plain Symfony and Doctrine work. We have some specifics like a product factory which is a service that is uh, used for creating products. It allows you to customize the class uh, if you want to use a, a, different, a different system, a different uh, model class for your products, but it's just totally, totally symphony. You can persist and flush that, uh, that product and it appears in the backend, it appears in the API, just plain symphony and doctrine stuff. We are also using symphony CMF. Like I said, Cilius is a core e-commerce framework, so we focus on that. We focus on taxes, on promotions, which are crazy, uh, on how taxes go with promotions and shipping, and how shipping goes with different billing addresses in the United States and so on, so pretty crazy e-commerce stuff. But we also have very small uh, CMS bits. We don't focus on that. It only pro we only provide like the most simple, um, right now we are in progress of imp uh, like re-implementing for the new interface the block system, but otherwise we'll provide only this basic block system, simple static pages, and some routing uh, configuration. And that's also not reinventing the wheel from scratch, so we don't build a new CMS on, uh, on top of Symfony. We reuse what Sym Symfony CMF provides. So as an extra, when you use Cilius, you get a solid foundation, the content management framework um, from the Symfony CMF, CMF project. It's, uh, it's totally not the CMS experience that you get from Easy Publish, Drupal, or something like that. But still, for most, for, for the simplest use cases, you get pretty, um, pretty decent experience if you need to do some custom, uh, custom and basic CMS. Mm, regarding CMS functionality, I'll talk about this a bit later. It also is, it's also related to the fact that we're based on Symfony. But you can get really decent CMS uh, with Cilius. But that's, that's a topic for later. We also use Payum. Payum is a completely separate open source project. It's a payment processing framework. So it's, a, it's an abstraction not only for the gateways, but it's, it's abstraction for the whole process of uh, processing payments. So in Sirius, we just integrate Payum, and we say uh, capture a payment, authorize a payment, refund a payment, and what, hap what actually happens, whether it's a PayPal or Stripe or whatever, is not really concern of Silius itself. We just have very, very thin integration layer with Payum, and everything is handled by this separate uh, framework. So, um, out of the box, like in the, in the core itself, we integrated uh, Stripe, PayPal, and offline payments, 
but Payum itself provides plenty of, uh, plenty of gateway integrations. So in order, to, uh, in order to make them work with Solus, you just need to add these few PHP classes that uh, convert, for example, Silius order to a payment payment, and then rest is handled by, uh, by this library. Um, one thing that is also quite different um, in the series compared to other platforms, it's format agnostic. So um, Symfony developers will definitely know FOSS REST bundle, uh, Bazinga hate OS bundle. These are awesome tools that help you build uh, format agnostic controllers. So in Silius, the controller that takes care of the checkout or displays a product, it can handle both HTML, JSON, and XML. So you don't really need to, like if you implement an action that is serving HTML page, if you want to get the same product information as JSON, you can totally do it with the same code. The difference will be your routing configuration. So, for example, our checkout through web interface and checkout through uh, API is very, very similar, uh, very similar workflow, and it's actually using the same controllers. So you can totally do it for even your, for your custom entities. So if you want to introduce, I don't know, a supplier model to Silius, you can do that and benefit from the format agnostic controllers that we provide. So what, you, what can you build using Silius? It, it has been used in production since like really 2011, 2012. Um, of course, it was very, very custom implementations with a lot of modifications, but uh, it's still, I would say, quite battle-tested, the concept. Um, I would say there is a, the beta period that we are, have in front of us will definitely bring more stability. Uh, but the fact that it has been used by experienced Symfony teams in a production environment and it works, I think it's a, I think it's a proof that uh, it can be already quite useful even though we don't have the stable release. Um, Clink project, this is quite interesting use case of Silius because we have a mobile, uh, a mobile application for Android and iOS. We also have uh, a website and they are all using a mobile API that we have implemented on top of Symfony. Um, it's kind of like microservices architecture. So we have a mobile application, uh, uh, a mobile API application that uh, pushes the data to the, to, the, to the phones and the website, and it's communicating with Silus API, creating orders, customers, getting products, and so on, which is populated by Akeneo, by the way. And, um, we also build like logistics and payment apps because the Clink delivery app is about getting alcohol in the United States based on where, where you are located right now. So you take out your phone, you like click locate me, and it shows you the inventory of nearby stores that can deliver to you within 30, 40 minutes. Um, and in these apps, we also used Silus components. So the cool thing is if you have a bigger uh, technology stack or if you have a bigger, uh, uh, a bigger project with more complex architecture, if you learn Silius, you can use a lot of that knowledge in separate apps which are not even e-commerce related. So you can benefit from the components and use them in other Symfony or just PHP applications. There are a few other projects uh, running in production. We are preparing a new showcase, which will be online together with the beta in November on our website. But if you, if you have a look already, there, is, there are some stores processing decent amount of orders. Uh, uh, like Highbeast has about 30 or 40K products. So also not so small catalogs are running on Cilius. Uh, they use Elasticsearch and so on. Okay, so uh, like I said, you, you get a very basic CMS with Silius, but as we are built on Symfony, we can integrate with a lot of projects, and this means a different type of integration. Not API, not some page scrapping. This is something I, I heard recently that some, some uh, e-commerce solutions also have like page scrapping integrations with other systems, but we can actually put easy publish CMS and Silius inside of one, inside of a single uh, Symfony application kernel. So this gives you a decent, very, very good, I would say, 
uh, CMS with Celius e-commerce experience. So you can reuse tweak templates, you can reuse services. It all comes together nicely. I'm really excited what will happen after the uh, release because I think um, Drupal being based on HTTP kernel interface from Symfony has a really great potential for integrating with Celius as well. Another use case is migrating from legacy. With most of e-commerce solutions right now, your only option is a complete rewrite. And I think from experience we know that complete rewrite usually is a failure or a very long lasting and expensive process with a lot of stress for developers. With Sirius components, you can take small bits of the legacy website that business-wise make sense to, to redo because they don't work correctly or we want to introduce something new there. And you just take the components that you want, like taxons for categorizing products, and integrate them into your existing uh, legacy application. So you don't need to make a full switch from day one. You can slowly get know, um, learn the platform and use it step by step. Cilius, this is again for you guys, for developers, is built around single responsibility principle. So every single thing in Cilius that happens, like selecting the zone for applying taxes, selecting the tax category, the tax rate, this is all hidden behind usually a single, small, at most, I would say, 300 lines class, PHP class. And the, the biggest benefit that we get from that is we can easily replace that bit. We use dependency injection properly with Symfony container, so every single bit that is in Cilius can be replaced with your own implementation. One of the uh, interesting use cases that I show on as an example is we, uh, on the clean application, um, taxes uh, in US can get a bit complex. But as it's about alcohol delivery and every store gets a different uh, order when you purchase something, uh, we simplified the whole Cilius taxation system by overriding a single class that applies taxes to, um, to products. And instead of using the default Cilius logic, which is like take the billing address, match the zone, get the tax rate based on the tax category. As we, as we were selling alcohol, we just said, okay, take the amount, the percentage of tax from the store that you're buying from, apply it, and it's done. It was like 50, 50 minutes customization that allowed us to save a lot of time on configuration and simplify the whole process. So that's the benefit of single responsibility principle. Again, what is interesting for you guys as developers is definitely testing. I think in 2016 you totally need to test, and I think it's not necessary to explain why testing is beneficial for the project. I hope you don't need to explain it to your managers. But Cilius is built in testing with Mind from day one. Like we started with PHP spec and BHAT, the development of the platform. So we use pretty much the cutting edge testing methodology in PHP with Story BDD. Hmm, thanks to Behat, uh, that allows us to really do a clear um, requirements translation both inside of Cilius where we build some features and with customers that use Cilius because the only thing you need to do in order to get this new feature uh, uh, right in Cilius is implement a scenario. And Cilius, the, the rework, the part of the rework that we done this year is uh, BHAT, so we, we already provide a set of uh, ready-to-use steps for BHAT that you can use to configure Cilius according to business requirements of your customer. So you just sit down with your customer, you talk, okay, you ship to this and this country, you charge this kind of taxes, and you can use the steps that are defined in Cilius and have this BHAT scenario describe your functionality. For those of you who don't know BHAT, it's, um, the shortest explanation is that this tool takes this scenario and runs it in a real or emulated browser. So these scenarios are executed. Actually, Cilius is configured using the description from, from this scenario. So it creates countries, it creates zones, and so on. And then the, the actual clicking on things, adding to the cart, or placing a whole order happens in a real browser. And we assert on the output. So you can totally describe taxes, shipping, promotions with that. Uh, all this results in a pretty good code quality compared to 
uh, old solutions. I think there are still some bits that we need to totally refactor because we are quite crazy about quality. But yeah, the result is really nice, and I think I think you would be you, you you would be satisfied using using this all these classes in interface. Okay, so quick example: how to customize Celius. Like, let's say that you need to add something to the uh, shipping logic. You basically need a new field on the shipment itself. So every order in Celius can have multiple shipments, which are represented by the shipment entity. Standard doctrine entity. Nothing fancy. You can just extend it in your app bundle, which we provide in Celius standard. This is just like, like your application specific bundle. Um, Nothing, nothing specific to Silius. This is just a Symfony app. You develop Silius app just like you would do with, with Symfony. You configure it, so you tell Silius, okay, use my class now. From now on, every shipment in Silius is represented by my class. The only contract here is the shipment interface. That is here, in this case, we are extending the core class. But the only contract that you need to, um, that need, you need to obey is the interface. Let's say you want to uh, customize the form. So you, in the checkout, when someone uh, selects a shipping method, they also want to select a packaging method, like whether uh, it's a gift wrap or whatever, or you have some custom pack packaging types. You also extend the form type, the standard Symfony form type. You tell Silius, okay, from now on, use this form type. It's done. Uh, Every single bit of business logic in Silius, this was also part of the rework because previously we were experimenting with both state machines, event listeners, doctrine listeners. Don't do that. Never put business logic inside of doctrine listeners. It will hurt. And um, we rely on state machine. So everything in Silius is described as a state machine process, order a checkout state, order payment, shipping, uh, the, the state of the shipment itself, whether it's ready, shipped, or returned, and so on, is managed through state machine. And you can hook in to every single step with callbacks. You can disable Silius callbacks. Simplest example, sending an email after the checkout is finished or after the order is paid. It's a callback in Silius. You don't want it, you disable it with a few lines, like you use the name of the, of the callback from Silius, you say disable true, it's done. It's, it's no longer sending the email. You switch that to, to a different step in the checkout or in the, in the order process. Use your services, your Symfony services. As you can see, we have some packaging charges applicator that will call apply method on the order object. So customizing Sirius uh, business workflows is really simple and solely relies on the, on the state machine. <coughs> um, and the good news is that we have Silius Alpha released. So it's been a long ride. I bet some of you have been following the project. It's been crazy for both the core team, for the community, for early adopters. If you have been running a Silius store <laughs> with previous versions, that's definitely, uh, the, the upgrade can hurt, and I'm sorry for that. But I think it, in the long run, it will, it will be worth it because we have really took all the experience that we got from previous projects, from the community, and to rework the most annoying or ugly parts of Silius. One of, I will be perfectly honest with you, one of the mistakes that we did with Silius initially was like um, put too much stuff into it because it was so cool and so easy to develop things with Symfony. It was like, okay, let's put advanced reporting that is customizable. Let's put super advanced permissions management and so on. It took us some time, as it is one of the first big Symfony, pro uh, Symfony projects, and it's built, for the most of its time, it was mostly built by a community. It took us some time to get the experience needed to, to make, uh, make it a good core e-commerce framework. So right now, we removed some of the features, and we leave these extras for you guys. Like, you can implement these functionality as separate, you guessed it, bundles. Because it's a Symfony app, we don't have a plugin system. We have teaming system that is custom one for us, that allows you to create teams as composer packages. 
but the plugins are really bundles. So in order to extend Cilius with some extra functionality and share it between different apps or distribute as a paid or free plugin, you just create a bundle. The, the alpha includes a new interface, and the cool thing about it is it's also configurable. Like I said, Cilius is an e-commerce framework, and we focus on that, but at the core there is a lot of, um, a lot of I would say, generic application functionality, like our grid system. So this, these filters and this list of languages that you have in Cilius is rendered using our grid system. You just need this piece of YAML and few templates in order to get something like this. Also for your custom entities, and also for your applications that are totally not related to e-commerce. So I encourage you to check the documentation, it's updated, and um, you can totally benefit from, uh, from that even, even if you don't do e-commerce development. It supports multiple languages. Um, the interface is using uh, Semantic UI. That's also a big switch from the previous versions of Cilius. Uh, we finally use proper front-end tools, so NPM and Gulp. No discussion about it. Like I, when, when I was selecting a framework and tools for um, for Cilius, it was like every week there was someone with the JavaScript framework of the month. So it was it was very difficult choice. We we stick with jQuery, and that's that's simple enough. I encourage you to check documentation. This year we spent uh, we had a pretty much full time developer uh, working on the documentation. So if you checked Cilius a few years ago, a few months ago. It's definitely much better documented right now. We have full book and full customization guide, which provides tutorials on how to customize uh, Cilius. It describes all the concepts. It's still for developers, so there is no user guide, unfortunately, for the interface. Um, but you guys as developers can, can already and, and really benefit from, from the docs compared to what we had previously. The demo is online. You can check it, don't break it. We are still in alpha, um, but uh, you, can, you, can, you can have a look around and, and check how it looks, how it works. Like I said, one of the things to remember is the things you see is mostly routing and templates. So if you want to customize that, you just build your templates, your routing, and build your basically your own uh, front end. Or use Teams if what we provide as a B2C interface is enough for you. We have all the basic like the product catalog, uh, card checkout, my account panel. We just uh, introduced address book, which is not deployed to, to the demo yet, but will be soon. So all the basics are in the B2C shop interface. So how to get started? Just standard Symfony and uh, Composer way. You create, I'm not sure it's visible correctly, but you just create a Cilius standard edition, which is exactly the same thing as uh, Symfony standard is for Symfony. When you install the standard edition of Cilius, you get a Symfony standard application which contains Cilius in Composer vendors. So when you want to upgrade, you call Composer upgrade Cilius Cilius and new version of Cilius will land in your uh, vendor folder. Uh, it totally works with the built-in server, so you don't even need to set up Apache. Just run the server, run a few commands which will set up database. If you are a Symfony developer, there is nothing, nothing fancy. We just create this, uh, run the migrations, uh, create a database, run the migrations, that's it. Um, visit Cilius.org. It will be redone for beta as well. We are in progress of implementing the new website, but the current one still contains, I think, some useful info. And thank you. If you have any questions, it's time. You can shoot. Thank you so much. Yes, please. Hello. Um, Hi. How do you manage uh, the and maintain the fixture for Beat? The fixtures? Yes, for uh, okay, Beat uh, scenarios. The, the problem is that we use Behat a bit differently because I think uh, the, the, the documentation of Behat lacks this important documentation on how to use it in, actually, 
unfortunately, I have to say that real world projects because it contains examples for very simple things. But what happens with, uh, with uh, a project like Celius? I think I can show you. Um, whoops, spoilers. Uh, I can show you our BHAT folder inside of Cilius. Or I can't, sorry. Okay. So we have a quite big piece of code for running our BHATs, and that's because Cilius has plenty of, uh, plenty of stuff to handle in BHAT. And our current approach is to have uh, context as Symfony services. We are uh, currently in progress of releasing BHAT extensions that allow you to do this. But our uh, contexts are not just PHP classes like you use standard BHAT, but they are actually services. So we have a setup namespace. So pretty much every entity in Solus, yeah, it's, it's a big piece of code, but it's totally worth it. Uh, it makes working with BHAT a pleasure. We hope to release and document all this we, ha we actually have a BHAT guide in our docs, so we can check it out, and there is a basic explanation of how things work. But currently, we have, let's say, a uh, locale context, and for a step like the store has a locale with code, we have a separate method for that in this context. So we, store, we uh, manage these fixtures, we just create uh, this stuff in the context. Um, we don't use Alice or Doctrine fixtures, we just do plain PHP code, and yeah. Uh, the fixtures uh, uh, persist uh, to the database or? Yes, yes, okay. yes. They are, they are saved so, in so the. So uh, how long it takes to run uh, uh, all the tests? How oh. long it takes? Oh, oh, you, oh you, I, I don't have the, I don't have the Wi-Fi, but our, build, our full build on PHP 7 takes about 14 minutes right now, from which I think, I don't want to lie, but 800 scenarios with 8,000 steps takes a few minutes of that because we also test packages and, and, and documentation and so on. So the full build takes about 40 minutes. If I would have Wi-Fi, I would show you the Travis CI uh, to get proper numbers. But it's a couple of minutes for all these steps. Okay, thank you. Um, on our website, on luckyoncom, there is a blog post which uh, describes our optimization for BHAT. So you have a few tips for that if you use BHAT. Thank you for the question. Any more questions? Okay, thank you guys. I'll be around, so if you want to talk about Celius Symphony, Behat, just talk to me. Thank you. Thank you.